Our guest on this episode of the podcast is one of our best friends. We've grown up fishing with each other for, I think, the past 16 years. We've had a ton of great trips, a lot of good luck, um, and a lot of rough trips together as well. I'm, I'm honestly shocked. I'm not shocked, but surprised that uh, that he was willing to jump on the podcast. I mean, kind of his MO is fishing his work, although I know that he's more passionate about it than than most people that spend a good handful of days on the water. But um, it was great to have him on. He shared a ton of great stories. Um, but he's a commercial he's a commercial fisherman. He's a uh, bluefin tuna harpooner. He's a rod and reel fisherman. He also lobsters, commercial striped bass fishes, commercial mackerel fishes. He ran charters with us um, on the Mass Bay Guides boats years ago. Um, in his younger younger days, and he's also hunted his entire life, as has his father. He's basically fished from his home port at Green Harbor, Stellwagen Bank, George's Bank, Prince Edward Island. He's fished the canyons. He has more experience than most most people twice our age in our local waters, chasing you know giant tunas and, and other pelagic fish. Uh, he's a great guy, um, great storyteller, incredibly smart, uh, really, really good fisherman, and uh, it was a pleasure to have him on. So, we also had our our significant others, my wife and um, and the uh, and his fiance, were in the room for this one. So you'll hear a little bit of banter there, but it was a great time. I had a couple beers, and uh, it was nice to just sit down and talk fishing for a few hours. So. Without further ado, please welcome to the podcast, Captain Jeff Weber. Welcome to the Sea Bros Fishing Podcast, where we follow three words of wisdom. You can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last, you'll just have to keep listening. Stay tight. Oh, where we want to start boys i don't know and girls now we i have, feel like i need a headset we have claire and mel these are, you guys are the first female audience members. guests you're the first really audience great. members period they're not really guests though because they don't have a mic but yeah you might hear them in the background i live here <laughs> Well, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Thing. Cheers. cheers to friends and fishing. Just missing Emily. Oh, Jeff's hotboxing the office. <laughs> All I can think of is uh, that 70s show when they're going around like, <laughs> on exactly. the table and it's like, <laughs> view with Weber. <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> so fucking funny. We, we watched that 90s show. I watched it too. It's pretty good. Is it good? I'm like five episodes in. Is it as funny as the seven that seventy show? It it only is because they have some of the old guests. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah, Red's f- just as funny, dude. They're like this. It's the same. I couldn't get over how they didn't really look like they aged much. Like they look pretty similar. Like Red's looking pretty old, but the re- the rest right. of them all look very similar. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be really dumb, and then I started watching. I'm like, "This is." What's the stuff. Amazonian chick's name? Riley just growled. What's the Amazonian chick's name? The kind of pretty girl. The redhead. That, yes. Donna. 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 Oh yeah. Uh, some. Oh, Brian Donna. likes Donna. I do. She's a little big for you, dude. <laughs> I, I, it's a little <laughs> tall. Yeah, it would not be a good matchup, I don't think. But. She's got to be like six two, right? Six two Six girls four. Got that tall. <laughs> 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 All right, we have finally the long awaited, anticipated Jeff Weber in the house today. If we do that, I have to put a dip in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put one in too, actually. Um, I'm excited for this one. We kind of already did it though. On, we did like a practice round on the way to and from North Carolina. I asked them some questions. Yeah. 
I pr- <laughs> so you didn't even know. I'm excited. You know why? Because I've never been harpooning. True. I've only been once. Jeff's been more than once. Brian came once and we got one. We tend to get a lot when we fish together. Nine times out of ten. Yeah. It's fun. December was fun. Harpooning with you was fun. I want to go again. Bass trips get in the way, though. Yeah. Yeah, when do you start? Well, obviously, you start harpooning June 1st. So when do you usually harpoon until, like, uh, weather-wise and well, last, wise Last year, we harpooned until the end of June because they dropped it to, you know, one fish. Yeah. And with the price of fuel, it definitely wasn't worth going. And the restricted fishing days. Yeah. So, obviously, we need the weather. Right. Chances are the weather's not going to line up with the restricted fishing days. How was the weather overall last year? I mean, I know charter wise, it was we had yeah. barely any cancellations right. early season, but harpoon wise, mm-hmm. how was it? I don't think we got any fog, so that was nice. A lot of the I remember of sitting at the dock waiting for the fog to lift, and well, sometimes it never did. Yeah. <laughs> or going out and driving around in the fog one day with uh, Charlie. I remember we drove around the fog for 10 hours waiting for it to lift because it was supposed to when it never did. Do you just like putt around slow or are you like... Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Mel Mel making Jeff laugh. (laughs) I love it. Mel and Jeff just got engaged. That's like really what we should be talking about. I know. You have to put it in front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Flash the ring in front of the camera. Egg. <laughs> YouTube has to don't blind it. the there camera. Is. There it is, overheating. Oh man! So what? Like when you're harpooning, what are the variables? You got basically weather, wind, sun, fog. Wind, sun. That's basically everything. That's, everything and rain obviously yeah. hurts you. So you need obviously almost zero wind. Yep. You need the sun. To see the fish and for the fish to come up. Yeah. I mean, they'll come up. I mean, I've seen them running when it's raining out, but for the most part, you need the sun. Yeah. And then uh, fog so you can see. So, like, what angle? I mean, I'm assuming it. I already know the answers to some of these questions, but like for people that are listening, like, what time of day do you focus on harpooning? Like, are you leaving at like six in the morning? Obviously, it depends Usually on where you're going. Usually, we leave later. Uh, if the fish are like in the whales and feeding, yeah, you can get them early in the morning. Um, but for the most part, if they're up and running, they're not eating, and it's you know afternoon show. Yeah, um, obviously that makes it tough too because a lot of times you get that wind in the afternoon. You have better sun better sun angle in the afternoon though. Typically, like when you- uh, there's like a very short window because if it gets too low, a lot of the times the fish will run into the west towards the sun, and then you're into the glare. And you're running on fish and you can't see them. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, coming home, you're saying? Yeah, running back home. The fish are running west. A lot of the times, if it's a good show day, the fish are running west, and you're trying to get home because you've had enough or whatever, and. It's sometimes you'll be running fish right till dark and the you're going on fish looking down, looking down. You can't even see you them. can't see them. We could barely see them the day that I went with you. Like it wasn't super low sun angle, but the it was like southwest five to ten. Those pictures and, are sick, by the way. Yeah, they are pretty sick. The one there's one of him, one of the first ones I took. I think it's like kind of wide and you see travis driving him out in the pulpit and if you look like way up in the top left corner of the picture you can see the group of fish yeah like perfect fucking v wakes it's weird because i mean you said you couldn't see him at all until he basically threw at him right i could see him when we were when he when him and travis initially saw them i could see them yeah and then i lost them until they were about like a hundred feet off the front of the pulpit or Three it was lines. probably about the same time. I remember that group. It was three or four fish. And it was probably the same time I lost them. And we were going on them. And they were barely making water. And then I couldn't see any water at all. And I was just about to tell Travis to get out, you know, take it out of gear. And I could see color on them. Yeah. And uh, 
we got lucky and Travis didn't hit the button to zap him. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so what happened? I mean, I, I heard, so I heard a little in my bit tower, about... there's a, a zapper button. Yeah. And then there's a, what looks like a button, but I think it's an old alarm. It's like a buzzer, alarm right, or whatever. Buzzer alarm. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like it should be like the button. an old horn for the boat, maybe. Yeah. Mm. yeah okay. kinda. It almost looks like a, I, uh, I a think it's an old engine an alarm. Outboard. Engine alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Travis, for some reason, was trying to mash that down, and that doesn't go down at all. <laughs> <laughs> and earlier in the day, I said to Brian, I said, the only button you don't want to hit, be careful of, is the zapper, because if you electrocute me, I'm going to be really fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, Brian remembered that, and he did hit the button, yeah. because Travis was trying to mash down the alarm, and Brian hit the button. How many times did Travis hit the button? Like, the, the wrong button. So he went, don't, and then he was like, you could see, like, his stomach go, <gasps> like, yeah. drop like, out, like, oh, drop shit. out of yeah. his body. Like, I right. could see it through his fucking sunglasses next to me, and I have the camera, I'm like, kuh, 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 like, getting the whole fucking sequence, and I literally, like, reach over and did it, and hit it. As I was doing that, and Travis goes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the fish, it was just about to unplug. So we got like 120 feet of wire. Yeah, that's I plugged in that after. Yeah. Plugged into the, the zapper, I guess you could. Yeah. And it was just about to unplug, I think, when Brian hit it. Because the fish just got enough electricity where he, he died, but he didn't. Yeah. And I forget what happened. I think we were able to pull the wire back in enough to plug him back in and hit him again. he did unplug because he was going like yeah. as we were fighting him he did unplug line. and i think we were pulling him up and every time he'd kick a little bit i'd have travis hit the button again yeah to zap him and he'd stay on the button until the fish would stop moving i'd pull him up a little bit and i don't think travis wanted wanted to come down from the tower because if we pulled the dart he would have felt like an idiot yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was unbelievable though zero to 1,000 miles an hour, but... Yeah, we hadn't seen any fish that day. We had saw a couple, like, distant smashers yeah. in hoagie schools. Like, you'd see one blow up, you get over there, there'd be scales. Yeah. And, like, a slick, and it'd be down. And then Joe actually found him over there. Yeah. yeah, my buddy Joey. Who's the man? Ran a few bunches. He ended up getting three that day, I think. Yeah, I think he got three. Yeah. Pulled the dart on one. He talked about that day for a solid hour while we were trolling North Sick. Carolina. He's like, that's what it's all about. It's no plane. They were all monsters. They were all 105 yeah. plus inches eating pogies. How big was the one we got? Something like, like 700 pounds. I don't remember how long it was. I just remember <clears throat> I never seen like, I never seen colors on a fish like that in the boat. Like, the, like, they're obviously, like, things are still right. functioning when I mean, you zap them. There's no line marks, none of that shit, Nothing. Right? Like, he, yeah. he came in the boat, and, you know, he's he's obviously, like, dead. Right. But his, like, eyes and every, all the nerves are still functioning. So it's, like, it was almost like he's, like, looking around the boat as he's in the boat. Like, he's Seven, paralyzed. You know, you know a coughing elephant or a coughing big guy? Yeah. Coughing 750-pounder on jet back at Jeff's boat, and it's, like, literally shuddering the deck. It was, it was, I'll never, ever forget that. Like sometimes you get 60 fish. seconds, right? When he came in, the sometimes boat. you get fish that you zap, they're dead as a doornail. You bring them through the door and they just start freaking out. You're up in the tower looking for another bunch and you can just like feel the whole boat shaking. It's wow. insane. Pretty crazy. It's absolutely insane, dude. Yeah. It's something I wouldn't know even thought about. Um, ask him about the rig. Yeah. So like you're standing on the pulpit you got a harpoon in your hand what from like the harpoon all the way to you know through the basket how you zap the fish all that stuff can you walk us through like how you rig it or like how so, most people rig it i'm sure everybody the, has the, their own the way, way i way learned i think it's 120 feet of wire so like what is it like insulated air, it's, insulated wire yeah. it's a uh, aircraft cable right um I think it's Galvi wire mm -hmm. and it's PVC coated. Everybody has their own preference on how thick the coating is. Yeah. Um, so it's 120 feet of wire plugged into the zapper. The zapper, I don't really know much about yeah. it. It was set up on the boat. Yeah. I know there's some sort of grounding plate. The fish gets hit with the harpoon, 
guy in the tower hits a button, the electricity goes through the fish, back to the grounding plate. And then that plug, you get 120 feet, and then that plug pops off, and then you have no, yeah. no way to zap So them. if the fish doesn't zap, if the dart, you know, so you hit him in the top of the back, yeah, and the dart goes through the fish, and the, the dart's not in the fish, the electricity doesn't go through the fish. Right. And it doesn't zap. It takes a rig. So what happens is you got 120 feet of wire attached to the plug, attached to a basket of rope. Um, most guys do 600 feet of rope. Yep. And uh, the way I do it is as soon as the, the rig starts going out, I start clipping on buoys as quick as I can. Usually the first buoy I, I clip on is a low drag buoy. Yep. That goes down right away. And then you just clip on two or three more just for a little extra drag hmm. yeah, have you ever had to clip another basket on no i mean it takes it all out even yeah. if the the fish seems like it's dying i usually just let it all go out let it tow for a little while and gotcha what's the longest like from hitting a fish to getting the fish in the boat that you've had um last year we had one and we went out on a whim didn't think there was much around where we were going, but it's where the wind was letting us go. Yeah. We got out. I actually said to Mel, I said, you point the boat in the direction. Really? <laughs> so we're steaming out. We, we get up in the tower. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets out of the jetty and she points the boat somewhere and we get up in the tower and it was ended up being a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be. And I'm, yeah. uh, I had my buddy Charlie with me and I'm like, Charlie, should we go out East? I mean, it's, it, it looks good enough to go out East. Like, and he's like, Oh, I don't know. I'm like, Oh no, nope, there's a bunch right there. And it was four fish lined up. Perfect. And, uh, so we're going on them and I threw a little early. I, I hit the fish far back. It didn't zap, took the rig. He towed for about two hours. And we started moving buoys closer to him, closer to him, just trying to get him to die. And the dart pulled. I'm like, fuck. So oh, I'm all mad. I, I start coiling everything up. And I yell at Charlie. I go, get up in the tower. Find me a fucking fish. Him and Mel are scurrying up the tower. And they get halfway up. And they're yelling at me. Get on the fucking pulpit. Get on the fucking pulpit. Like, okay. So I'm, as I'm running out there, I can see a fish is blowing water off his back. And I'm like, oh, no shit. What are the chances? And we're going on it. We're about 10 boats away from it. Charlie goes, it's the same fish. I can see the hole in his tail. I'm like, no fucking way. Like, and we get about four boats away and I can see the hole in his tail. It's white tendons coming out by the tail. And I'm going on it. I'm like, all right, all right, this fish is either going to be dumb as shit and let us go right up on him. It's going to be spooky as hell. Or it's going oh. to be spooky as hell. Because yeah. we just electrocuted him a little bit and then he didn't die. And <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out he was dumb. So as I'm throwing the harpoon, I'm like, I better not fucking miss. <laughs> <laughs> so I see the dart go perfect. I mean, right behind the shoulder, dead square in the back. Charlie lays on the button. I can hear the zapper going, the, the buzzer. And the fish still didn't really want to die. He was freaking out. And I'm, finally, he died. And we get him in the boat. It's like, holy fuck, that's incredible! Like to stick a fish that's twice. Crazy. I mean, so you, not only that, I mean, you had him on the buoys for two hours, two plus hours. And first. it's funny too because he wasn't when he was towing. He was down deep. Yeah. So when the dart pulled, I mean, he was on the bottom, and then for whatever reason, he came back up. And it's crazy. Decided he wanted to sun himself. Some I've more. heard stories that like harpooners will find fish that people just lost on rod and reel. I don't know if that's true. I wonder if it's a body temperature thing. Like they're up on the surface, they're running at that water temp, and then they fucking freak out. They go to the bottom. It's obviously colder. It's earlier in the season. Yeah. And then sure the and then they're like, oh fuck, and then they go back up to re like. They expended all that energy. Now they're in they cold need water. The warm dumping water. energy. Yeah. And then they need to get back up into it, you know? Yeah. I forget who I was talking to. Someone saying that, like, they've stuck fish that were clearly, like, just lost, like, just chafed off after, you know, two-hour battles and shit. And they're just, like, running the surface. And I don't know if that's true. Have you ever seen anything like that? Like, we have you stuck any fish with hooks in their mouths? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. Stuck one with a tag. I could, I could see the tag in his back, and I stuck that fish. That's, That's sick. so sick. But 
Was that a spaghetti tag or was it like a yeah. tag or something? I forget what color it was. I never reported it. I should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still sitting on the boat. I have a bass tag. I haven't reported yet either. Another Somebody one. told me it was a tag that was in a fish that had a sat tag. It was like that color. Mm. It could have been in a uh, sewn in yeah. tag and then that's just tag. the corresponding spaghetti. That's uh, Claire. She just left to go order pizzas. But Claire's first tuna was... Uh, acoustically tagged and we got the track back and we caught the fish on fisherman's bank it's we're good and fi on fisherman's bank up in between pei nova scotia went to george's like west side like not to the hague line like kind of like middle of george's cultivator. bank yeah cultivator area like Mar murray basin cultivator area like it actually came in then out went down through hydrographer canyon Ran the whole edge all the way down to Bermuda and then went all the way back. Wow. And then we killed it in the same exact spot that it was tagged in like hmm. three years before. It's crazy. And it's all like month, month data. So you can see, you know, every month where the fish was and all that. It was pretty sick. Hmm. Um, what would you say is the hardest part about harpooning? Um... Harpooning them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like thro it's honestly, throwing the dart, or is it all the complications? Like no, I mean leaving the dock before you even leave the dock. You no, know, it's much easier than rod and reel because you just make sure the zapper's right. I mean, you know, you test it at the beginning of the season. Then, I mean, sometimes the begin, you know, during the season you have a zapper issue, or you think you have a zapper issue, but you're not hitting the fish right. Um. I would say if the fish turn sideways, when their tails to you, it's not that hard because you're not dealing with the refraction of the water. Mm -hmm. As soon as they turn, it's much harder. And, All right, because you're, I mean, you're in an angle of them under. Then you're dealing with the refraction. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've only been doing it on my boat for four years. Yeah. So there's guys some incredible harpooners that just very rarely miss. I mean, everybody misses, everybody misses barn door, easy shots, but I mean, there's some guys that just very rarely miss. Did you ever, throw. did you ever like, like, did you ever just stand on the pulpit and like hit paper plates and stuff? Or did you just legit go straight into stick and tuna fish? I mean, I never like threw paper plates out and like tried to hit them. Cause I feel like that's pretty easy to hit. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things that you just got to do, yeah, you know, yeah. as long as you're not throwing the harpoon and you're flat sticking it or, or something. I mean, that's the biggest thing is actually just throwing it and making sure like, all right, I can actually throw a harpoon. Yeah. Um, I've seen guys where the back of the fucking pole hits the water first and you're like, that's not the right yeah. end. That's yeah. not going to work. <laughs> that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. You want the pointy end <laughs> first. Speaking of the pole, what's, what's different? I, I've noticed differences, but... For those that haven't, you know, seen bluefin harpooning and all that, what's the difference between like rigging the cockpit harpoon versus rigging your actual? Uh, the pulpit harpoons are definitely longer. Yeah. Um, I think without the head, mine are 138 inches, whatever math that makes in feet. Yeah. <laughs> without, the, without the shank? 12 feet long. Sh the yeah. shanks are about 12, uh, 10 inches. So you got the, the shank, 10 inches, the head. Like six. I right? forget my heads. I think six inches are out yeah. of the pole, and one hundred thirty-eight inches. I think it's roughly twelve. So feet. it's like almost two feet longer. And the shank shorter. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the shank shorter because you don't want to risk buttonholing the fish and going in and out. Like you want mm -hmm. it to just drive meters. That's just like prep, just yeah, how they probably, come. Or, yeah. Yeah. And they're aluminum because just, you want them to yeah. bend so they don't like tear a hole. Yeah. Bigger. Aluminum shank so they they bend. You know, yeah. you get, you know, one fish out of a shank. But yeah. You just buy aluminum at bulk and cut them. And yeah. And as far as, like, your darts, are you trying to make your darts hold on there? Or are you making no, them very so loose. fall Actually, off? Like, I, I drill the darts out yeah. so they're loose, real loose on there. Um, just tape, you know, no paint stick or nothing like that. Just yeah. Tape it two or three spots. Hmm. What's the uh, 
What's the biggest biomass of fish you've seen out harpooning? Of giants. Giants and then giants or small fish? Just like general tunas. Like you went out there and you were like, holy shit. I mean, there's some days where it's perfect conditions that the tides line up right and they start showing and you're going bunch to bunch. I mean, there's some days you're I've been on the pulpit for two or three hours just going bunch to bunch to bunch. You never even come off the pulpit. Um, most of those days you can't get near them for some reason usually because they're so nice that just the fish are spooky yeah yeah um, what usually happens those days or hopefully happens is a little breeze comes up and the fish start going into the breeze i think it kind of covers the noise of the boat a little bit and you kind of get on them a little bit better you don't so, have to talk about it if you don't want to but what's the ideal What's the ideal haul? Like, how do you keep yourself sneaky? Like, there's, the, I, I know this. I know there's desired hauls and shit like that. Yeah. You bought your I own mean, for a 30, reason. A 32 Holland is the sneakiest harpoon boat out there, but I mean, they're small boats. You, yeah. You guys know. I mean, you guys, oh, yeah. you guys fished on one for a long fucking <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. You did too. Um, that yeah. seems like forever yeah. ago. Like, yeah, about 10 totally years ago. I about that. Holy oh, shit. Oh, yeah. We haven't even gotten into that whole fucking deal. Yeah. Jeff worked for OG at one point in life, which is fucking 2000 and 12. 12? Yeah, 11, 12-ish. Oh, yeah. Those, like, two summers were unfucking believable Through the shanty? We had the shanty. Oh, my God. We, we, had, we brought up the shanty at the podcast. Let's yeah. just, let's, I'm, I'll, I'll give the layout of the shanty. So This is taking a wicked sidebar. But it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, that's the whole point. 800 square feet, maybe. No, like 600 <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> so, Corey and. We're going to have Corey on here. And he said he wants to come on and talk about lobster. Corey and Dave Krause. And Corey, Dave Krause actually rented it. Yeah. Jeff rent- House and Hummer. I moved in. <laughs> Jeff moved Jeff, in. Well, he didn't quite move in all the way in. Yeah. He was like on the entrance. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, Jeff I moved into the, the entrance. It was the mud room. <laughs> Jeff lived in the mud room. It was a fold out couch and it wasn't even like a good fold out couch. It was on the ground. Yeah. It was one of like the flip down cushion ones, right? Yeah. It was cushions on the ground. Yeah. Jeff lived in the mud room. We, you stepped over his bed to get in the house. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you were polite and use the back door. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Hummer Rock Beach. It was just fucking awesome. It was like, it was just a great experience for everybody, I feel like. Yeah. Everyone was working, chartering. I was thinking earlier about this and how much we loved fishing. Me and Corey would have my little John boat in the back of the, the boat. The duck fart. Yeah, the duck fart. <laughs> FV. <laughs> FV duck F-V, fart. That's a cool thing to do now. And <laughs> FV duck com. <laughs> and we would get in from fishing all day, charters, and we would go fishing. <laughs> right. That's a, that's the stage Ben's at still. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Ben will go get off the boat. Do I do that now? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ben will get off the boat and go back to where we were bass fishing. Yeah, go catch again. more bass. Yep. Like, holy shit, dude. You're, two, you're three, it'll change. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But that was that was a great couple of summers. How'd we get on this topic? We were just, I don't know, we sidebarred. Yeah. So harpoon sticks we talked about, ideal conditions. What do you need? A bottle oh, opener. Hold on. No, nope. how much shit's gonna get, fall? You're gonna mess up something. Hold on. Don't do it. <laughs> I'll get one. <laughs> Just gonna knock over all the fucking mics. Um, so we talked about the stick. We talked about the rig. We talked about weather conditions. We talked about biomasses of fish. I'm uh, more interested in like what, like when he's going out. Like where does he? How does he? What goes through his head to like think where these fish are actually gonna be? Oh, it's like certain times of the guess. year. Oh, yeah. Literally, is it a complete guess? Is it like certain times of the year they seem to be a little further east, and then like as the harpoon season grows, is it, do they come inside? Are they inside right for, away? Sorry, for the just, most part, where we fish, nobody rod and reels. Yeah, so you're going anywhere from east. what twenty five to fifty five miles further than that. Yeah, no, I'd say. On average, 40. Yeah. From Green Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, you're burning a lot of fuel, which sucks. Yeah. And 
We need I a did. bottle opener. Sponsored. Stand by. <laughs> 40 miles. The, the average day is 100 gallons. Yeah, so last year, $600 just yeah. to go. The first day I went out last year, it was six, 600 something dollars. Actually, I was looking at pictures the other day, and it was like 111 gallons at $6 and 36 cents minus the discount it was like 600 bucks and we didn't get a fish <laughs> yeah i mean how many you can't do that many days no, like that. no yeah you go backwards really really fast harpooning yeah really fast and the guy i grew up harpooning with he said that he's like be careful because you can go harpooning and go backwards really really fast yeah it's worse than rock i mean it's it's probably about equals rod and reel well you're running because you're day, not though. using leaders and all that yeah stuff, but, but you're running all day so like there's your yeah. leader there's the where it and the hardest right. part is when you're not seeing fish you just want to keep going faster and faster and faster to find fish yeah we didn't go very fast the day i went with you no we were like maybe knots yeah all day. 10 knots maybe all day so like beginning of june like what what goes through your mind are you are you looking for reports from people seeing stuff are you mm. being like you know what they're going to be east of the bank generally just go out and drive around and that's the hardest part is because you you'll be like all right let's go north for 10 miles we'll go north and you're like ah, fuck we should have went east right, we'll go east and then you're like you you start going east and you're like oh, maybe we should go back west but a lot of the times i want to keep on going further and further east and you go back west and that's it you like you go back west you're not going to go further east you know so like you tend to just keep going further and further east yeah and is there a spot where you kind of feel like you run out of the life or is it different every time the life out east is it could be three tuna chicks in a sheer water and you're like oh man this looks this looks real good <laughs> right right right, right. <laughs> or like, like w one fucking minky whale yeah i remember one time we saw a humpback whale in the distance and we're like oh that's gonna be the, the spot and we keep on steaming and steaming and the humpback whale just kept on going further he was like he was steaming at yeah. eight, eight knots himself he was looking for something yeah what's the create what's some of the cool shit you've seen aside from tunas out there i mean obviously like getting a bird's eye view on flat calm days 20 25 feet up in the air you see a lot of jumping baskin sharks a Interesting. lot a lot of jumping baskin sharks hmm. the tunas will be with the baskin sharks a lot of the times so i don't know if they they get mesmerized by the tail i'm probably saying too much mm. <laughs> no i don't think so we've actually any... old fish behind baskin sharks i remember one year not on my boat i was going with somebody else and for some reason they were behind the blue sharks almost like they are harassing them huh. they'd be blue sharks and the fish would be right on their tail flashing behind them and kind of almost like so they're pecking weird. on them I mean, they obviously do it with whales but now they do you know they do it with sharks they're with the blue sharks quite often in august last year <laughs> yeah i mean when you got sharked out you were like it can happen any second yeah it's, it fucking sucks because you're spending so much money yeah like you said on a few podcasts ago, there were some weeks that we were actually probably losing money every day. Yeah. Because of how many liters. 12 hooks. liters a day. Yeah. 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 I remember one day I went up and, and, and fished next to you guys. You guys caught one first thing in the morning. I was somewhere else and I steamed up to you guys and I just caught nothing but sharks all day. Yeah. <laughs> I think was that I, a really rough day? Yeah. It was one that, what was the name of that? I think we uh, posted that. That cargo ship. We have posted yeah, yeah. that bite the other uh, day. The jumbo cargo ship. Jumbo. Yeah. yeah. It was like yeah, an yeah, elephant. Was, forgot about was that. Was there an elephant on it? There might have been. There uh, was. It's a ship called Jumbo. There's a white elephant said Jumbo. I could be, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'm going to have to look back at the video. Yeah. It's on Instagram. That was a fun reels. morning. Yeah. I was not expecting to get bit that quick that morning. What's funny is I think we were the only bite. Like, it was fishy as hell. We probably marked like a dozen mm -hmm. first few hours of the morning. And then uh, we got a bite. And then I don't, I think maybe there was like one other bite all day. Mm -hmm. I know dot com ended up getting one like in the dark in the morning yeah but were there any other fish caught that day do you remember there was like six i, I think, think the so. sweets might have got one that day like north of way us, up i was I, say. I was south of everybody who yeah. Yeah. Ways. i marked them in the morning caught nothing but sharks crazy yeah sharks are bad this year um so let's let's migrate a little bit to ron real because you I also, go pee. yeah go for it <laughs> so or we can talk about my figure. Yeah, we can talk about Jeff. Jeff's Jeff's hourglass figure. How would you say? How would you say? Um, 
harpooning, you know, four years on your own, obviously you did a ton before that. How would you say harpooning helps your rod and reel fishing or does it at all? It doesn't. It makes it harder to go rod and reel fishing. Yeah. Because once it, it, when the tower and pulpit's on the boat, I, I don't want to go rod fishing. Um, the boat sucks with the tower on any yeah. kind of weather. It sucks. Um, Watching you back down on that fish last year on the corner with the tower and everything, I was like, <laughs> it t- it took you so much to there were some, spin the fucking boat around. Oh, yeah. Jumbos. <laughs> any kind of, oh there were some God. fucking hammers Any kind of wind. Like, it's hard to fight fish because you just keep drifting off it because of the tower. Yeah. Um, I didn't have the rear controls hooked up that day. Yeah. We, yeah, we it, know because you, you. you got on the radio. We lost it. Yeah. Mel cried. <laughs> Did you actually cry? Yes. Yeah. I, it was like, <laughs> I, I never, ever, ever get mad losing fish. I mean, just, you're going to break them off. You're going to pull hooks. You're going to, yeah. I mean, it, just Part of it. losing them in a stupid way. And it was my own fault. I was up, up front driving and the fish wouldn't pinwheel. So he, he did one of them like, you keep the boat in the right hand circle and the fish just kind of fall kind of playing them up yeah yeah and uh i'm like oh he's probably close enough and i walked back to harpoon it and he wasn't close enough but i threw the harpoon anyways and i I was trying to untangle or get the harpoon back up in the boat because the thing was bouncing off the boat at this point he got under the boat and he broke off and i felt like a fucking idiot i got so fucking mad yeah yeah that was a long fight too. It was like I remember watching yeah, at least was two like, and a half, went, three yeah. hours. You hooked up like on the western edge of the corner, and you ended up like a mile and a half north of the notch, which and then south. To people that have never been there, that's that's like two and a half miles north, and then you went all the way back past where you was anchored, and ended up almost two miles south. And that was by the time you lost broke them. them off. Yeah, I think everybody lost them that day, right? My buddy Johnny, that was. He fished with me last year, and that was the first fish he's ever even seen rod and reel be hooked, whatever. And oh he, he's fighting God. the thing. That sucks. It, it was tough. And I, was, yeah. I wasn't going to mention the part where Mel didn't go forward right. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. It's hey, a real here truth we go. here. Here we go. But I said forward right, and... <laughs> She didn't. A what? <laughs> a what? It's That's a tiger funny. shark. It happens though. Yeah. And then the next day, I disconnected the tower controls, hooked up the rear controls, and we. That day sucked. It was flat calm, a million boats. You got one. I got and one. We, yeah. It was there was a lot of dogfish. Yeah. I think I drove around most of the morning, talking to people, and then we anchored up and. A fish ate it as I was like putting the balloon on or something out of my hands. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you actually, I think that you was came fucking up lucky. And you, you said hi to us and we were chatting. Yeah. And like, I'm just going to go a little south here. And you, you literally anchored up and put the bait out. No, he went, uh, he was up on the shore. Uh, up on the high yeah, ground. He was up with on the you guys. Right next to where we were. That's a great fucking thing to talk about, though, because I mean, you're out there every fucking day. We're out there a lot. Um, heavy fleet situation he literally just drove around till he found like his own pocket of bait you know pretty much That's basically what it looked like i remember in the morning because the the tide changed everyone was hadn't even swung yet and you like drove around till you yeah. found your own spot and you I, were he was I, like i up think and i away drove around everyone. until i just got sick of driving around talking to people yeah that sounds about <laughs> right <laughs> sounds you know what that, that does it sometimes i yeah. honestly think that like even with a fleet and I mean, think of how many people look at Charlie get the random yeah. bite at eight o'clock in the morning because they're the last person to show up. Yeah, you know, they had the- he, he shows up late most days and he shows up and oh, I can fit in there and he fits See, in there. I, I don't and- know if it's late. Like, I, I know it looks late to everybody else, but I think he just knows on the timing. He knows when the fish are going to come through. Yeah. So like I saw him do it a few times in the fall when, you know, it was like fucking one in the afternoon and he'll, he'll show up yeah but Her, and my dad know. and i are looking at each other like they're gonna come through it too he's fucking charlie you know, always it's fucking weird I'll be like oh they'll come through between 11 and one yeah and they, they do yeah last last year why. the tur- that one of the tournaments cj hooked up in the morning on the tide change and i was like trying to fucking squeak in because we've been fishing there for like four days straight I squeaked in. I was like, pretty much fishing his anchor. And I was yeah. like, hopefully he hooks up so I can fucking 
actually fish. Yeah. And then Charlie showed, it was like leapfrog. So CJ was like in the spot. I was fishing his anchor. He left. And then it was like doldrums. And then it was time to leave. Like on a and, charter. On a charter, of. like t- time to leave. And Charlie anchored like a little deep of me. And he actually pulled up. He goes, you're in the spot. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm in the spot. And then I had to fucking leave. And he slid up, stayed, and got one. At dark, right? Right at dark. Got yeah. one, you know? That's one He's hard so thing fucking dialed about charters. On that shit. It's like so many times we've had to leave. Yep. And like, you everybody know, else is you sitting You know, there. if you stay, you'll get one. You know, you yeah. stay like two more hours, you'll get a. But then, you bite. know, if you stay two more hours, and then by the time you're all done, you're going to be absolute smoke the next day. Junk the next day. Yeah, it's tough. See, that's, that's where I go wrong. I get a lot of fish late. Yeah. And I should probably just leave. Like Charlie always says, why don't you just leave at two in the afternoon? Because I get a lot of bites right at dark or in the dark. Why do you think that is? Is it because you just I stay late a lot? lot? Of times in the morning, I'm lazy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, I'll be like, fuck, I got I to gotta hook one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's time to catch yeah. one. Yeah, that's awesome. No, right, like I'll work harder later in the day. Yeah. Me and Mel hooked one last October. Was it October? Doesn't matter. Bay last year, I think it was in the bay, and yeah. it was it was it wasn't dark, but it was a couple hours before dark, and in the morning we didn't. I mean, we marked and whatever, and, and then finally later in the day we started working harder, and we actually started chumming, and uh, which we hadn't done in a long long time. Yeah, I know you guys did it last year, mm-hmm. and we got a bite. We ended up losing it, but I think everybody lost on that day except Charlie. It's funny how that those days happen. Like, there'll be like ten bites and like two caught. Yeah, you know. And then in other days there'll be ten bites and all ten are caught. You it's think it's like you think it's like a school of fish that's just mean. It's weird, right? Mean combined with big tides or something. I think it's the tides. Like, I feel like we miss so many bites fishing circle hooks. Uh, on like fast tides. Like overall, like if you were to like add, you know, do the math, I feel like. Our odds go up I think at least 30%. No, I don't know how to fish think, circle hooks so on fast, fast tides. No, like I'm talking like full moon, crank and tide, which maybe is what, two, three days? I think it's like a situation like this. Like you have a wind-driven drift, but the current is pulling your baits in the, in the same direction almost. Like it's a falling tide with like a southwest wind in the bay. And then they eat and they come at the boat and it happens for everybody just the way they're traveling and your hook set's just that shit. Day. Yep. That day is just shit right off the rip. Do like you guys miss gutted. floater bites because they eat it and keep on coming into the tide? It's towards, the fucking worst. Yes. Towards the boat? Yep. Does that happen? Only... Actually, I feel like that's better for only, circle hooks because you're, you're not coming tight on it right away. Yeah, like I would say the only yeah, you bites... You roof hook a lot though that when they're doing that because then you're hooking them as they're coming down. Yeah. You know? I mean, at the end of the day, we don't miss that many bites. But yeah. the bites we miss are either floater bites, mackerel, way back, max. way out there, mackerel. max. And it's like a swing and they take, you know, a few seconds and you might get tight on them for a second and then you pull the hook. Yeah. That shit happens with every fucking hook. Mackerel are the worst, though. The worst. I hate fucking mackerel. They never invented. <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty of them, though. Yeah. I mean, they, they get bites. We don't fish them enough, honestly. We really don't. No. They get a lot of bites. I'll fish mackerel on my far floats when the tide's running running hard. Yeah. See, I'm the complete opposite of you guys. I love mackerels. I fucking like fishing mackerels. I've had Dude, they get bit a lot. And I like those big you don't like them, but I like the big fucking humongous max. Yeah. I like schmediums. <laughs> like schmediums? Schmedium mackerels. Live mackerels. I just don't think the big ones can get away as easy. You have a shorter window to fish them because they die, and your wet, your timing in the well is shitty. Claire's, Claire's just, laughing. Claire's at you. laughing. So at we're talking about Mandingo. Yeah, we're talking about girthy mackerel, and she can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell my wife about mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's got a herring right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, can we go back to harpooning a little bit? Because yeah, change the subject. Yep. Um, what have you seen change like in the last, well, you've done it for four years. What have you seen change in four years of harpooning with like these bay fish with the pogies and stuff? The fish inside don't run as much as when I first started going with guys. I remember the first time I I went. What do you mean don't run as much? They don't come up and push water. Um, 
You used to see them on the bank pushing west of the bank. You yeah, like in we, the deeper water. Used to see fish on the bank. I haven't, like seen, the notch. I haven't seen a fish home. push on the bank in fucking Especially six coming home. Uh, how many times on your yeah. way home you, you see, see them in the bay or whatever? It doesn't yeah. happen. I mean, it does, but not very often. I think it's just boat traffic? No, I think it's just, I don't know. I mean, there's more fish than there, <laughs> there's more fish than there have been. I just like brainstorming this stuff because yeah. it's like we're we're all thinking it, but no one's really. A lot of people, about it. I don't know. I've I've heard like that. Was it the Boston sewer discharge or whatever right. that's offshore, offshore a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah in yeah. the bay, yeah, somewhere in the bay, that, um, maybe because there's so much bait now, they come in to the west and eat. But you would think maybe they're eating more. In you there. would think they fell up and then they come up and digest. Or, that is true. There's there's a lot more inshore bait than there were was a long you know a while ago. Mm. I will say I think <clears throat> the herring has been maybe not necessarily last year, but like the two years before was there relatively early, marking fish on the bottom right off the rip. Like first yeah. couple of tuna trips marking in middle of June we're getting down rub and then like which is weird. Even even though the size class was smaller, like two thousand. Well. eight nine somewhere in there i want to say we would see them a lot up on the surface but we also didn't have that i think that was the sand current. eels true we haven't had like a good well this year we actually saw some sand eels right on yeah, the bank high. but we used to see tons and tons of eels yeah the but yeah definitely haven't seen them push i think the last time i saw him push was in the fog with dad remember that yeah, when trip? was that it was like four years ago four years ago we got we got a fish out at like wildcat trolling. You actually talking about giants pushing. Yeah, by giants. The way. We've seen small ones push. Just... He got a couple fish at wildcat, and like we were chatting, and then we actually trolled that fish at wildcat that same year. And then it, you guys got a bunch trolling that year. We had a yeah, yeah a few that year, and then that water that was there kind of was like splitting the bank, and like the break was basically like just south of the thumb. Yeah. They had it actually slid there or something, and Dad was like, they're going to be right here. Yeah, it's the only time you ever, ever look at temp charts. And we pulled game. we pulled up. It was fucking quarter-mile visibility, and we slowed the boat down. There was like eight pushers on the edge right where he said they were going to be on the break. I remember doing those uh, submarine yeah. things on, on the Holland. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we did one like June 1st and seeing bunches pushing out just on the east side of the bank yeah yeah and we i forget if we were putting the submarines out or collecting them the next day or whatever and we put squid bars out with the scientists <laughs> on board you remember that yeah. remember <laughs> that. that's so funny. have you have you trolled it all out there while you're bounce, bouncing around uh one day one day we trolled it was that year you guys were trolling them up and we yeah. put squid bars right through fish that were eating really we didn't get any hmm. we ended up getting them harpooning that day later that was a day. weird year because there was a ton of squid in june and, it and was july a ton of squid that year like yeah. right away and the, the fish already had them in their stomachs and they were coming from the bottom and coming all the way up and eating a bar all the fish we stuck that not all of them but most of them had their tummies were just full of squid beaks huh just the beaks their tummies a little Speaking beaks of, in their tummies. Speaking of tummies, what other what other crazy shit have you f found in fish or attached to fish? Long line hooks. Had one of them like Walmart cod rigs in a fish's throat. Like the tube ones. Yeah, the yeah, like little tubes and like the like ghetto clip. That's not like a. Yeah, like, like the big U round clip. clip yeah, thing. that was in a fish's throat. Nothing weird, harpoon. Most of the time, you stick them. You get them harpooning, their tummies are empty. Digesting. You ever seen them poop on the pulpit? Yeah. Uh, when was it? I want to say Charlie was with me. Yeah, we were up We were up north, and my buddy Joey found him down in the south, and he texted me on a satellite text there, and we steamed like 30 fucking miles all the way down there. And we pull up there, and we, we're going on the first bunch we saw, and one shits. And I stuck that one because you shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Was it like a lot of shit? It was just like a cloud? Like almost a cloud of tuna cloud dukes. Of I tuna don't know. Shit? <laughs> I've never seen one shit. What so else do you see him do dude. when you're sneaking up on him? I mean, I'm sure you, you see him. You see him, him like stuff. rolling and, and flashing and stuff. 
I don't know why, why they do, you, do that. So like, there's no bait around, and they're just like randomly they're flashing. rolling. Yeah, I mean, you, you see them in like the, if they're in the sand deals, like rolling and flashing, but they're actually eating. Yeah, I think. Um, sometimes I don't know. Almost like you ever see that video of them in the tank in Japan spawning, like they're zipping around 100 miles an hour and rolling and, and then flashing. The cloud comes out and they're all yeah. Around maybe it wasn't it. shit. Maybe it was tuna. Cum. I'm pretty sure it was tuna. Cum. Hmm. I mean, some guys have said, about. you know, they they might spawn up here out east, you know, I wouldn't doubt in it. June. The water seems a little cold, but... What other... Uh, what... Edit that part out. If you could... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fucking scientist. If you could have, like, the ideal harpooning conditions, you know, you're like, I'm probably gonna fucking kill one today, what would they be? Like, wind direction, sun angle... Sunny, Obviously flat calm. Sunny, no wind. Tide change at right, right around noontime, I would yeah. say. A lot of the times they'll come up and start pushing at slack, which is weird because, you know, you wait for the slack to get a bite. Rod fit, and reel. You know, rod and reel. And most of the time you get your bite on the slack, but for some reason they tend to come up on the slack too when they're not eating, so which doesn't, weird. it never made sense to me, but. Huh. Or did those fish just eat? They but just you say, ate, but you they, said they they're empty up. most of the time. Yeah, they're empty. So are they like are they relaxing before they feed? Yeah. No one knows the answers to any of these no. questions. We're just no. thinking. Yeah. You know, are they relaxing and like conserving energy and then they all of a sudden go, you know what? I'm it, hungry. It's yeah. All, it's all theory. What other formations and shit do you see when you're trying to find them? Like, are you seeing? Like, see them milling. Which I've is, seen pictures. Of, which like, is the worst? I mean, you stacked. guys have seen milling fish. Yeah, they're yeah. just like looks like they're a dog chasing his tail. So they're in circles. Chase each other. I don't. Do they just know swim why? in a circle. No. Okay. I talked to uh, a spotter pilot about that, and they, you know, he said the same thing. I never really. Maybe they just, know, No one knows. I wonder if it's like a way to conserve energy. Like you know, conserve how, energy. Like, like a, you know, when you're chasing a car, or we never. NASCAR. Like a dog. <laughs> yeah, chasing a car like a dog. No, like car, car, cars chasing cars. Like you get yeah, the yeah. drafting thing. You wonder if it's like a draft thing. Yeah. But, get you know, like geese car, flying right? in a V. Right. Yeah. That's a good theory. You know. When they're doing that, uh, the uh, milling, are they always going the same way? Or are they only... Are I never going? noticed, but that's good. I've heard like clock old timers wise, saying that they only wise. go a certain way, which I think is the same way they eat on down rod bites. I got a theory that tunas are right handed or left handed. Yes. Like eighty percent of are right handed, right? You no, know, humans are, you know, right handed. So no. when they yeah. eat, they eat something to protect their strong side, their right side, so they get hooked in the left side. Yeah. But that's just theory. Or do you think it's like you used to notice a lot trolling squid bars on you know, yeah, like small almost fish. Almost always you, in the one side. You would see them come up and eat it one way or another. Yeah. yeah. No, we've definitely seen it. That's with, another theory that probably with, doesn't uh, make sense. Hook placement. Yeah. It's almost always in the left side, right? Yeah. And downrod bites, like if you watch all of our downrod bite videos, almost every single one of them, it's like 9 out of 10. The rod bends and swings left looking back. Yes. Which is weird. It's almost all of them swinging left. Mm -hmm. Which to them would be turning right, I guess. Right? Yeah, initially, Eating, initially right. swings left. I've had a lot of them swing left, then go right, though. You know, yeah. It's like either left and then go up into the tide and into your shit. When or they, like when they, they eat, eat the down rod? Yeah. Yeah. Most of our most of our bites, it at least an, either stays left and runs forward, and we have to back the drag off, or it's left and then the fish turns after you get pressure right. onto the hook. Right, but it's, it almost even Bob Cook said the same thing. He said they almost all go left. Yeah, looking towards the transom. Yeah, which is weird. I never noticed because I'm r running around trying. Not to <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on circle hooks now that you fished them for half a season or a like topic. a third of a season? Ah, uh, so. So what hooks, all, start from the beginning, what hooks have you used? I love the salt water. Which they don't the make. The Gamagatsu salt water, which they stopped making. Yeah. I had a, a shit ton of them. I still have a shit ton of them on the boat. I started pulling them for one reason or another. I don't know. Uh, I switched to the Owner Gorilla. Yep. Which I loved. 
and I would fish it anything whiting, mackerels, herrings, um, pogies even. But I did switch to circle hooks because last year I was I was pulling a lot of of the gorillas, hmm. and uh, I switched to the 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 mutu, mm-hmm. which I know guys break. The barbs break, yeah, but they break pull. in half. But yeah. I mean, at the same time, yeah. You got to look at the percentages. That's what I figured. If I'm pulling gorillas, if I'm pulling 30% of the gorillas, but I'm only going to break 10% of the Probably not mutus. Even. Yeah, right. not even. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think we went, we didn't lose a fish in. Mm-mm. In, uh, we December. had one hook set that we were like, we, when we killed them, we were like, oh God, that was close. And I think it was with the bigger hook. The last one no, that was... we got in December, we stuck them, he took off, and then the hook pulled. Yeah. But we ended up getting them. Yep. Brian, Jeff, Jeff. He, he came back up, and I think Brian was jabbing at him. I was jabbing at him. I missed him like three times from like five minutes. We weren't missing. Just... This episode is brought to you by Rodan Marine Systems. This past season, we partnered up with Rodan Marine. They produce extremely high quality trolling motors slash GPS anchors. We have a 30 foot center console. It's actually a 2801 Parker with a bracket, considered a large center console. And we do a ton of anchor fishing. We fish on anchor a lot inshore in the rivers um, and inshore waters around the South Shore, Massachusetts and throughout Cape Cod Bay. Uh, live bait fishing for striped bass. Uh, we also fish on anchor a ton. I would say 75% of the time while we're offshore tuna fishing, live bait fishing, uh, we're on anchor. So having the ability to quickly stop the boat, deploy an anchor and not have to use, you know, 400 feet of anchor line and deal with swing on a tide change and not easily being able to reposition it's kind of a no-brainer for us to uh, reach out to Rodan and, and see if they would um, be interested in, in putting one of their trolling motors on our boats. We've been fortunate enough to use Rodan's down in Florida uh, with a couple of our buddies who have actually been on the podcast, Jason Stock and Dave White, and we were extremely impressed by them when we used them on their boats, and their boats are of comparable size to ours. So we ended up getting... You know, thanks to Rodan, we ended up getting a, their 36-volt HD GPS trolling motor with the 96-inch shaft. It seemed to be the, the right size, right fit for our center console, and the thing is just unbelievable. We were able to put it into the test in a variety of sea conditions. We found that, you know, anything, you know, a consistent two to four-foot chop um, as long as the wind isn't super super gusty we were not moving like our position did not change throughout the day throughout a tide change it really was or is truly incredible so just a couple of things we get we gave this thing a full season before you know we wanted to give a testimonial for it you know there's a lot of different you know crazy products on the market um, technology's come a long way and you know we really want to see if this thing could hold up to our charter season and the elements up here in the northeast and it it really impressed us so we installed the the motor ourselves just taylor uh, myself and uh our new mate ben kid that worked for us in the 2022 season and hopefully will be with us for years to come um we installed it ourselves. We decided to go with a 36 volt uh, lithium battery. It's lighter than lead acid. It requires less storage space. You don't need as many batteries. And we're actually able to get 10, I want to say 12 plus hours of runtime before we needed to charge, which is which is crazy. You know, we charge every day after each trip, but you know, if we had doubles or you know, double inshore trips or anything like that, we, we really didn't have to worry about it. So some of the situations and um, really benefits that we found of using a spot lock trolling motor, you know, GPS anchor, trolling motor, specifically Rodan, where tide changes, there's no swing. So if 
you know, you have several hundred feet of anchor line and you're positioned on a piece of bottom, there's really no movement. There is no movement at all on a tide change. So you can stay in the sweet spot for longer. The other thing is wind against tide. So, you know, they're, when they're opposite each other, it's hard to send baits out. We have little tricks that we use to try to get baits away from the boat in that situation, but it's often difficult. And many times you're only fishing or able to fish one rod. So with the, with the trolling motor anchor, you know, on the, sp on the center console, we could still fish three rods off the bow and have a full spread. And it, it, it helped us it, get more bites. Absolutely. Um, you know, both inshore and offshore, uh, the support I think is the most impressive and most important thing with, with Rodan, you know, salt water is a harsh environment, charter fishing, you're beating, you're beating your equipment up pretty good. I'm sure any other charter captains listening to this can attest to that everything breaks and you got to fix a lot of stuff yourself in order to, you know, keep going through the season and keep going trip to trip. So, uh, if we ever had an issue, which we had a couple of minor, minor wear and tear issues, Rodan overnighted us parts. Their support is unbelievable, easy to, easy to fix and, and modify things on your own. Um, just a great product. So. Uh, we wanted to, we wanted to give a, you know, honest testimonial, the product and we're really impressed. So if you're interested in, uh, in adding, a a Rodan to your, to your boat for this next season, you can, uh, visit rodanmarine.com and you'll see the entire lineup of their trolling motors and GPS anchors, all different shaft lengths, voltages. And, um, uh, we think you'll be impressed. So check them out. It will definitely be a game changer in the way that you fish on anchor. I'll send, you, years. I'll send you harpoon videos. And yeah. I, have what, I haven't even uh, posted the video of the one I took yeah. of you. Post it with you. That oh, one's on the podcast with me. I'm going to do that as your intro, like the, the Instagram post is that video of you sticking it because it's unbelievable. I wish I had a video of me yelling at are Anthony. You, are you recording? Yeah, it's good. Um, Close the door. The acoustics aren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other harpooning things do you want to Where are you going? Before we switch. I want to go back in, into the uh, formation thing. Okay. I know some of this stuff is boring for like Jeff. I'm so sure. ideal. Now, the, but like there's like all this. I've seen pictures and I've actually seen my own eyes. You got the milling. You got these like soldier things. So milling sucks. Soldier formation when they're lined up. We call it like soldiers is ideal. Yeah. Usually they're dumb, numb as numb as can be, and put that down so it's not digging. <laughs> I get wicked distracted. Yeah, Taylor is like <laughs> shiny. <laughs> Plus it, it picks up on the audio. Um, um, yeah. So like, there's no better feeling than going on a bunch and they're lined up like soldiers. You know, ten fish. Yeah. Nice water rolling off their back, running straight as can be, and you're going on them, and you know they're gonna stay for you. And you're just cocked back. I mean, that also gets a little nerve wracking because you're like, I better not fucking miss. And that's usually when yeah, you miss. That's a barn door thing. <laughs> yeah. When you have a soldier formation, say it's like 10 fish, are you telling the guy, that was just a door slamming, are you telling whoever's driving to like aim for the, like, are they aiming for the center Furthest, of it? Or are you like picking, like, you usually see it, and you're picking one like on the left? Furthest right? back or biggest. Furthest back or biggest? Furthest yeah. back or biggest. I mean, you don't want to run over fish to get to an, another fish because then that fish in the back is going to spook and then as soon as that fish in the back spooks that's another problem with with bigger bunches because the fish you know say a 500 fish bunch there's fish in the you know in the front that are just splashing water sickle fins and tails coming out and you're like oh, i'm gonna get one of them and then there's fish 15 feet down that really really too deep to throw at and those spook and then the whole bunch spooks and you don't huh. even get a shot so you almost are trying to find the ideal amount of fish to yeah. actually hit one big bunches usually suck from you know what i've seen um I, I know we talked about when we were trolling around down in north carolina but i can't remember if you had it happen to you too or if it was just joe but did you throw and then stick one below yeah. That's a fucking sick story. <laughs> that last summer. Um, 
I was fishing on a buddy's boat in harpoon category, so it was like in August. And uh, we were down at the sword, and there was a trillion boats there, rod and reeling. And a bunch popped up right next to us, and they're plowing right into a, another boat that was there jigging or whatever. And I threw at a fish, and I missed, and it hit a fish that was underneath it. Did you even see the fish underneath? It, it, yeah but, sort of yeah, yeah but you weren't concentrating you know, I, was, on I was focused on that one yeah and i hit the fish underneath it and, you know I, i'll hit him hit him hit him and the fish dies and i'm like i think that was a fish underneath the one that i was throwing at <laughs> no <laughs> shit it's unbelievable dude that's I weird mean, that, that doesn't like, happen often yeah how much don't get too fired up now how much penetration <laughs> like how much like how much like how deep can you throw and like truly smoke the fish? There's guys that can probably hit fish a lot deeper than me. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like I can hit fish deep pretty good as long as their tails steal me. Um, the harder you throw, the less accurate you are. Yeah. And that was like my first year harpooning. That was the problem that I realize now that I had that I'd have fish at my feet and I'd fucking hum it at them and just miss and i'm like how like how do you miss that you know yeah but you just lob it and let the weight of the harpoon i mean that head's the pretty work. heavy and, yeah and tuna fish are like butter they're you know it's gonna go into them right and uh yeah especially the back too it's like soft enough but firm enough yeah you know it's yeah funny. once that dart goes in and turns it's you know it's in there last year it actually probably happened at least twice after I stuck a fish, dad would turn and be like, like, did you even hit that thing? But I was like, you know, it's just kind of just follow through. Yeah. And you don't feel like you're trying. Like if you feel like you're trying to hit them like too hard, you usually end up missing them or you're actually not even going to hit them that hard. Yeah. I feel like if you like, if it happens quick and you kind of just like grab the harpoon and stick them. You fucking drill them. You also have fucking a reach it, that's ridiculous. Like there's, it there's looks shots like you, that look. You would yeah. probably be a good harpooner because you got long arms, Dude, it's long abs- monkey it's arms. Absurd. You can just. Yeah. How many shots that I've seen like on video, you throw them like, it didn't even look like you're fucking throwing hard, but you're, you're like four feet closer to the fish. Yeah. Because you're true. tall. You it's know? It's like Max Cartman. He's a really good harpooner because I, I think because he's. Well, he's been doing it a long time, but he's got long arms, and I feel like he can yeah. throw accurately. Yeah. He's really good. He's a good shit. I actually uh, saw him and Zach the other day. His engine just showed up Did at it? the shop. Yeah, brand new. Well, not brand new, rebuilt, but it looks brand new. Um, soldiers. Soldier formation. What when when it's slack tide and you're saying they're showing themselves? Do you see them doing like one formation more than no, others? No, they'll just start showing. A lot of the times, you know, if it's flat calm and they're showing good, and like a little southeast breeze comes up, and they start plowing into that that little breeze, that's when they'll form up a little better. They're a little less spooky. Mm-hmm. That's when you can really get on them better. It's weird how like the east winds. Seems like just makes them move into it. Well, we were just nice talking about too. this the last podcast. Like, for some reason, the east winds like they they plow into it, and then like the west winds they kind of like hold. Yeah. It's well, weird. It's, it's nice with that southeast breeze that comes up late in the day because the sun's set in the west, so you get the the glare at your back. Oh, you can see them easier. You can just see them so much easier. And if they're plowing into that chop, they're yeah, they're throwing water, they're throwing a ton of water. What's the biggest one you ever harpooned? Like you've stuck. I think it was a hundred and sixteen inches. We had we had three <laughs> fucking. Off. We had three that day. We had a like a one hundred and eight. Mel showing me a picture. That yeah, one. That's a toad. Show it to the camera. Time. Where was that stuck? Right there. One you can you can put it on this camera too if it's closer. Um, we had three that day of a one sixteen. That's a jumbo. A Look one at the fucking head on that thing. Fourteen and like a one oh eight or a one ten, or something like that. Look at the tail on that thing. I wish you kept that tail. I know. Know what tail I wish? Well, 
God rest his soul, but the that fucking jumbo you that got with Brian. Brian. I get it. That picture of you holding the tail up. That's one of the biggest tails I've yeah. ever seen. That was that same week we got that big fish, too. Yeah. That was on the old boat. That was a yeast. That fish was fucking huge. Well, yeah. That was 117, right? Or 116? I got to send you that picture. So you can, you How can big was ours? 115? 118. 118? Yeah, it was one, 117. And I remember that thing. It was two hours on the surface, tail wrapped, and I just kept backing down on it, trying to keep, you know, trying to get him to go down. And finally, I, I looked at Brian and I said, it's not Brian, it's here, it's Brian McGeckron. Yeah. And I said, we can't chase this thing around the ocean all day long. So I, I just stopped and he just like kept taking line, taking line, taking line, and then stopped and the line angle just changed and it yeah, dropped. It was like he sank and I just yeah. backed up over him. And I, we were in 210 feet of water, and I just watched him come up on the fish finder the whole fucking time for, like, probably 20 minutes it took to get him up. Sick. With my heart in my throat. And he came up like a little present. And we didn't harpoon him. We just put a tail rope on him. And How many – have you lost fish that are tail roped? I right, tail wrapped because I haven't yet knocked on wood. I probably have. Have you ever lost a fish? I love fish, fish that are tail wrapped. Oh, it's the best. I love it. You're I like, caught one. I caught a 107 inch or hooked in the tail. Up. Yeah, that one's terrifying. That was. I've f- never caught one in the tail. But have you ever like got them up tail wrapped, and lost them, or lost them no. that you knew was tail wrapped? Nope. I know Dave Good had one with Tucker and Scotty that they lost. He had one on George's with Christian that was hooked in the tail. They got I that one. That they one. had one in the bay. Like the day before Turbo Nat and I went out and got that one ten that was a shit show rough and yeah, um, that they like as they were harpooning it, the like came unwrapped and like pulled the hook or something. But yeah, I've never lost one tail wrapped. Because the worst, I, the worst I, I stuff is like trying to gaff it, thinking he was not gonna fucking freak out. Yeah, and instead yeah. of harpooning, like throw a quick gap just throw a quick gap in there that's definitely a mistake i Fucking made on that mistake. big one i mean he he didn't freak out we just put the tail rope on and whatever but i mean a lot of the times when that tail comes out of the water they freak out freak so yeah. you should definitely always harpoon them it's so fucking hard to harpoon them half the time though. yeah so you're like you're no trying angle trying to get an angle on i just them. aim for the asshole you all yeah. do yeah. <laughs> you know what uh you know, we the uh, the yeah the uh <laughs> That fish, the last fish I got this year, uh, Dave actually put it in the center holder because we knew it was tail wrapped. And I thought that was a fucking pretty smart idea because, like, they come up and you don't know how they're going to lay. And like, oh, his boat's so fucking wide. He had, like, two good shots at him. So, he actually, I'm standing on one corner and he came up and it was and he was belly to me. So, oh, I actually that, walked that to one the other December? side. That was tail yeah. wrapped? I w- at the very end, yeah. Oh, what a nice present. And I December. walked to the other side, and I was able to stick him in the black. But, like, if he was in the corner of the boat, I would have had no shot yeah. besides his belly. That's smart. That's and a good it's, idea. It's also less pull, too. Because they almost always come up, like, belly weird. first. Yeah. Like, yeah. Weird. Yeah. That's yeah. smart. That yeah. is really smart. That's why Dave's smarter than us. <laughs> he is a smart dude. Yeah. He's a hell of a fisherman. Um. What else? What other harpooning things? I want to. I want to kind of. I know it's like weird, but I kind of want to f- talk about a couple other things too. I know no, you're I'm like all me. horned up on hunting. Hunting, yeah. No, not like details of hunting, but you love hunting. Yes. You've been hunting your entire life. What do you like better, harpooning or let's say can't say hunting. Let's say bow hunting, harpooning or bow hunting or chasing a big buck. Chase. Chasing a big buck. I don't know. I mean, fishing's a job. Yeah. I mean, I'll always fish because it's, you know, just like hunting, I have to fish. But I guess hunting's not a job. I used to spend a lot more time hunting. I feel like, and I know we were talking about this with, you know, scouting and stuff when, you know, you you get all these newer guys hunting. Like me. and, And they're always in the woods scouting. Yeah. And it's like, I... I should be in the woods scouting, but I'm not probably because I've been hunting a long time and I'm just kind of like not over it, but you don't want to be in the woods as much. I don't yeah. know. Well, you've also, would you say it's because you've also hunted a lot of different 
a lot of different pieces of woods that you were saying like you can basically memorize a piece of wood yeah, one time. I mean I, I you know I could bring it back to a piece of woods that I hunted once 10 years ago and and go oh this is a good spot to sit right here yeah you know and it would be yeah what would you say what would you say is like a major similarity between what we do fishing and what we slash you do hunting uh you sit there bored most of the time (laughs) (laughs) that's true i can't sit in a tree stand without my cell phone if i like i bought a battery pack and everything just to make sure if like my cell phone dies i'm i'm out of that's a lot of porn (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's a lot of tree tugging Uh, I'd say I'd say harpooning is a lot like hunting, you know, yeah. like spot and stock, and yeah, you know, harpooning the days go by fast because you're looking and searching the whole time. You're not just sitting there waiting for a fucking balloon to go down. Or I I you know you know I haven't been doing it very long at all, but you know I, I did put a fuck ton of time in this year, and yeah, I, more I, than most, more than most. <laughs> But like I also, I'm freaking 36. So I feel like starting at my age, like I want to try to, you know, get as jump much ahead. Jump ahead. If I and you ahead. did it right. I yeah. mean, that's I mean, it's time in the woods is, you know, even if you're not hunting, you know, like you're you're still in the woods every day. Yeah, every morning. Literally, every, literally every day, every single every day. I've been trying to do like four miles a day at least. But I would I would say. And I th- Taylor looks at me sideways because we've been we're brothers. Obviously, we've been fishing together since we we're tiny, and we're both obsessed, still obsessed, always will be obsessed. But the one thing about hunting that I find mesmerizing is the interaction with the animal, like the the calling, like like you're seeing it all happen. Like you're you're Boom. not not every hunt, but like I don't know for me like. 50% of my interactions with deer this year were because of you. Yeah. Making a call or. I, yeah, I get it. It's just, I don't know when you can, like, when you are pretending to be one of them, that's the biggest difference that is that I'm obsessed with. Yeah. You know, the craziest thing hunting is when you're sitting in your tree, you're bored, whatever. And you're like, for whatever reason, you turn around and you turn around and there's a fucking deer there. Yeah. It's like you're, your sixth sense told you to turn yeah. around. And uh, I remember a buck I shot three or four years ago now. I hunted him for a couple of years, which was a big giant eight. And uh, I got pictures of him the day before. So I went in there the next day and I'm sitting there in the tree. And it was early. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon. And for whatever reason, I, I turned around and it, it had just snowed. And here comes this doe. I'm like, holy shit. And it took me a second, and I see him right behind her, and he still had snow on his head and his antlers on his back, like you know, like they weren't bedded too far away, and I ended up killing him. But for whatever reason, it was like that sixth sense to so weird turn around and be like, oh shit, there, there he is. Yeah. Fishing wise, though, it this, this is a sixth sense in fishing. The video we posted the other day. Which no, one? I don't like the same day we were talking about where jeff was self and he came up and got sharknadoed and we had a bite in the morning yeah i'm literally the down rod is behind me and i'm rigging a stick and if you watch i i don't remember doing it in the moment we both looked i know before the you're like you were looking down at the bait and the rods to the right the rod is fucking behind me and you see my head turn all the way around like a fucking owl yeah and the friggin' band's already going, and, and we're going. Yeah, on. I think sometimes, like, you can hear the band, like, the faintest change of the band sound before the thing actually snaps. That's why yeah. I can't sleep on the boat. I'll be laying in the day bunk, and I think I hear something, I shoot up, and I'm like, uh, yeah. fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> and then one time I was sitting there, I was fishing by myself, and I just lost one after, like, two hours, and it was rough out, it was shitty. And I'm like, fuck this, I'm going in. And Charlie, thank God, Charlie was like, don't go in, you, you, you'll get another bite. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'll put two rods out. And I put two rods out, and I'm trying to sleep. And I thought I heard something, and I shot up and ran out to the back deck. Like, I thought I was on. And I'm like, 
that's weird nothing and i come back inside and as i'm walking back in the wheel as the drag starts going and i'm like i did hear something <laughs> yeah. so I'm like, one of the funniest things i've ever seen like similar to that but we weren't actually on was i was fishing with jay graham on his old boat that old uh 25 bertram like that he completely custom it out fast and furious sick. and uh he was napping on the deck laying yes. down in the cockpit i was there and i'm i'm Fucking awake hilarious. <laughs> i'm awake air awake we're just doing so our the thing. kite rod broke yeah 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 but we're just watching the floaters and Jay is fucking out cold. Like snoring. Like that, snoring on his back. And he just shoots up. Like, he comes straight to his feet, pretty much. And uh, he's like, we're on, we're on, we're on. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, we're on. I'm like, and I'm looking at everything. Taylor's looking at everything. I'm like, we're not on. He was having a dream about being on. <laughs> and he, like, levitate, levitated up and, like, uh, yeah. was convinced that we were fucking on. The exact <laughs> same, same thing happened. <laughs> We were steaming in, and my dad was with me, and he was down below sleeping, dead to the world. And we're almost back in the jetty, and all of a sudden he comes, scr- I, I hear a commotion, he comes scrambling up, and he goes, are we on? <laughs> I'm like looking around, and I'm like, no, we're like home. <laughs> we're home, we're home. Oh. <laughs> Time to park the boat. Oh, I did that in the canyons in the middle of the night. I was so fucking tired and I was chumming butterfish. And I remember like, I was the only one awake though. And I'm the only one that still knows this even happened. And I woke up like, <gasps> I thought I saw the fucking sword float tip over. And I was like, we're on. <laughs> and no one heard me. I was the only one awake. I'm like, fuck. I was just dreaming. <laughs> like picture two in the morning, just standing up. We're on. <laughs> we're not on. The best thing I've ever woken up to, it was, it, speaking of canyons and you and you being weird, it was uh, Tulsa time. I'm napping on the day bunk in the wheelhouse, and I'm like just sitting there, like crashed out, and I'm looking out into the co- like my face is towards the cockpit. If I peek my head up, I'm, like sleep in, look up, sleep in, I look up. Taylor's got a chum bucket. He's got a fly rod, <laughs> and he's got like four rods on floaters and a down rod out sword fishing and i just i'm just looking at it like what the fuck are you doing right oh i was up off the uh the mud hole off the isla shoals and we were catching herring at night and the lights and stuff and it got late it was like midnight and i put uh i put a mackerel out because we were saving the herring for the next next day, so I put a mackerel out, put it on a balloon, 20 yards out, shut all the lights off, whatever, and I'm sleeping, and I, it must have been 2 in the morning. I, I wake up, and it's just fucking a drag scream, and I'm like, who the fuck's checking a bait right now? And I kind of peek out, and in the moonlight, I can see the rod bent over. I'm like, oh, fuck, we're on. So I, I run, uh, I start to run out back. I realize I don't have my boots on. I come back in. <laughs> put my boots on i go out back and like three quarters of the spool is gone like who knows how long this fish has been on for i'm like oh fuck i'm like what am i gonna do alone so i come around back in i'm like oh we're on we're on everybody wakes up and then uh we ended up losing it (laughs) speaking of funny bites have you had uh how many poop bites have you had one i was with uh sandro on the dot com and I think it was a charter. My So my engine on my boat shit the bed that fall. So I was fishing with Sandra, doing charters with him. I, it was closed anyways. And we caught one first thing in the morning. It was a great group of guys. I remember young guys. They were fucking hilarious. And I'm like, oh, I got to take a shit. So I go down and I'm taking a shit. And no sooner am I fucking done. Uh, not done, but <laughs> starting. <laughs> starting. I hear pitter pattering of feet, and the engines start, and I'm like, "Oh fuck! I think we're on." So I, I wipe real quick. I come running out. Sure as shit, the rod's been over, and, we're, and we start fighting the fish. And I just look at Sandro. I'm like, "That's the first poop bite I ever got." <laughs> and it's funny because me and me and Charlie, while, while we're harpooning on my boat, we always talk about what we have or have never been doing while we got a bite and one of them's pooping. <laughs> uh, 
the other one is taking a piss, which is amazing. Oh, right next to the down rod or something? Uh, it, it, it's amazing. I Dick in hand, never got yeah. a bite. I've Same. never had a piss bite either. Never I've had shit bites. Yeah. I've had two... I've had three shit bites. I had one. That's because you poop 12 times a day. You do poop a I lot. I do poop Like a at lot. least three times Yeah, I have a high percentage of poop bites. High percentage. I've only had one poop, poop bite bites. with dad when actually uh, Mike Pratt drove up to say hi. And he was like four feet from a boat <laughs> talking about like the mackerel. And the Who was pooping? I was pooping. You were pooping? And my dad was talking to Mike and then the down rod went off and Mike's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> steaming out of there. Oh, yeah. But I remember coming up and I was definitely just crailing all of my underwear. Yeah. There's no way it was wiped 100%. That will happen. One of your poop pipes is uh, on video. Yeah. Seen that video. Yeah, that was a big <laughs> fish too. That was like a 900 pounder uh, on a square. Oh, yes, on the corner. Go for it. So, yeah, my poop bite was my first poop bite was a 900 pounder on Southwest Corner on a charter release day. And I came running out of the, out of the, the pooper really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite poop bite, Miles. You have a t- favorite poop bite? <clears throat> yeah. Because so many poop bites, you have a favorite? 42 Freeman with Miles. Day trip. The day we, the trip we got, we went from Welker back to Hyannis in two and a half hours. Yeah. We hooked up and I was bucket pooping on the bow. And I think Manny has like video of me pooping and then come turns like I'm still pooping in a bucket and he turns around and the rod's bent over. I got a big eye and a white marlin rod that trip. Um I know I have a third one. I wanna say the third one was on your boat or someone else's boat. Not on my boat. Not on your boat. I had I've had a couple of nap bites on your boat. You've had some weird bites. You've, dude. You've been naked on the back of the boat with a white marlin. That was a cool bite. Yeah, I was showering on the way home, completely naked, and then the green stick went off. Yeah, and we thing. landed. It was a whitey, so we're like, you know. I guarantee no one. Uh, there's probably been a couple guys that have had that happen. I was completely naked. Like I was clearing the spread by myself in the cockpit and running the bandit reel completely naked because no one would come back into the back. <laughs> no one, dude, I wouldn't go back there. I was still in soap all over. Jeff's me. like gagging. And there's a picture of me. <laughs> There's a, I mean, I don't condone lifting billfish out of the water, but unfortunately... Definitely not naked. Not naked. This I thing do. this thing was fucking smoked. It was on the stick. It was like eye hooked with a big like 12-0 fucking Japanese hook. Yeah. And uh, terror, I'll never, ever do this again in my life, but I was in a towel and Matt and I are holding the marlin, but as you know, like their slime layers nasty on your skin. Yeah. And my the whole inside of my arms across my entire chest was just like looked like I got stung by jellyfish. Wow! For a while, that was a cool bite. If you didn't shave your chest, it would have protected. I don't shave my chest. What's the uh, out of all the fish you've caught rod and reel? What's like the most miraculous catch? Like the one that you're like, there's no fucking way we just caught that. I think every single tuna is a miraculous catch. Yeah, yeah. We fish such tiny hooks. Yeah, such tiny line i mean even even 200 is you know tiny for a fish that big and they have yeah. teeth i know yeah have What's, you ha- have you had any that, that just like either a battle or like fucking run out of line or we almost we almost well we would have ran out of line oh i trip yeah no I, when we tripled up and yeah one took every last bit of line except a couple of wraps that's fucking wild the one you me and brian got where at the end of the day you're like why the fuck did you throw all the dart line and back in the basket oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was a a crowded weekend day on the southwest corner yeah we ended up getting bit late and uh that dart we, shot we was got the fish un- up to the boat. fucking believable, dude. Yeah, yeah I've quick. seen that video. I mean, real quick. Yeah. You know, 20 minutes, black back, backed up on him, stuck him. Those are my favorite by it, by the way. Those are scary. They are. <laughs> but you feel like a little bit better. Like when you when a the fish bit. is still so green, like you see the, as the swivel's coming up into the rod, it's going like a foot back and yes. forth. Yeah. You're like, oh, God. I mean, <laughs> I forget how big that fish was, but it, it wasn't small. That was like it, a 700 pound. It was north of 100. Yeah. And uh, he took off after we stuck him, but not fast, but, you know, and we broke him off shortly after that. And then I think we had him on the dart line for 
four hours, was it? The whole deal was six hours. Was eight, it that eight long? Eight and a half miles. Oh, so, I mean, we had them on the dart line for five and a half then. Cause yeah. Yeah, we hooked them in like one, you know, 100 feet of water-ish, and we landed them in like 220. Out east. And we it was like out east. It was like 10 miles away. Oh, my God. At the, at the nipple is where we ended up killing wow. them. Where and, it, and it, like, you know, we kept on putting the boobies closer and closer to them, and we yeah. have all this dart line on, on the deck, and we're like, we, we got to be fucking close. And all of a sudden, you, like, the fish jumped clear out of the water, and it was like fish, and then like 40 feet away, the harpoon, and then the volleyballs were, were right there. And we're like, oh, he's, he's you know, he's... 80 feet away and he just sank to the bottom and the all the the long line clips on all the poly balls were slipping and uh brian just pulled him up dead as a door now it was like that was his last ditch effort was just mm. jumping out of the ocean and then, jeff, <laughs> and and then after all that we get back to the ball and jeff ran over the yeah. anchor line <laughs> we yeah. that's we, the worst we get back to the ball we steam 10 miles back to the ball I go to grab the anchor and I run it right the fuck over. Did you have to go in the water to get it? No, no we just we, just we 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 just went in eight knots. Yeah. <laughs> so after six, we hours, got to like max. You just trickle We got eight. to like max shuddering. Oh, yeah. And he backed it off a little bit. Oh was my our, god! <laughs> that was our speed the whole way. Home. Oh my god! Oh, we had enough time. That fish, that fish swam so far. We had enough time to cook late lunch on the grill yeah, as we, we were chasing we the cooked steak balls. tips while yeah. he was pulling the rig around i remember you got on the radio we were talking to like my dad and like a few other people you talked to mike i remember mike was going oh well, one time i had a fish that i i everything on the boat i tied to the the harpoon line to slow him <laughs> down I, I i i think he said he tied the uh, helm chair to the dart line to the dart line to slow him down <laughs> holy he, fuck. he has to get on this i know That'd be an amazing interview. The shit that he's seen out there crazy. just must be unbelievable. Have you seen any, like, really big fucking fish that you've either missed or, like, haven't had a shot at? I've heard Mike tell me stories about fish that just had no business even being in the ocean. Just so big. One year there was one, I think he, he told me that, uh, I think they called it the man, and they couldn't get near him. And then one day he got close to him like real close like he had his feet barn door shot and he said he just whiffed it and he couldn't believe it it sucks that sucks not to put words in a mic's mouth but i'm pretty sure that's what he said yeah yeah i'm sure it was something similar who was that. just saying that the, the yeah, mike uh, doesn't miss often i mean he's it's been a, a long time since he has the harpoon but yeah i would i mean i only know him a little bit through like talking to him now in green harbor fishing with you and on the radio and he's always kind and amazing and he's i think hands down the best guy out there the pratt family is incredibly nice they're so nice and, and then i learned a lot from them growing up recently ralph and, and mike and uh yeah just incredible people what advice do you, I mean, I know that the fisheries changed a lot in the last 10 years and who's doing it and how many people are doing it. And we could spiral on that and give our opinions and whatever else. But what advice would you give for someone like wanting to become more dialed, like wanting to not necessarily like pursue it as a profession, but like wanting to improve their instincts on the water? Like what's what's the recipe i mean you're 30 years old and you have more days on the water than most 60 year old people probably over 90 percent of 60 year old people uh, definitely yeah mm. i mean you've basically been on the water it's just time every day yeah. harpooning for four years straight during the season and rod and reel all and the way other people through before december that harpooning. and then you've had how many rod and reel years before that this is a, your, a, a while now. Your own 30, boat. and this is your third boat in your program. Like, that speaks to how yeah. much time you've spent on You started at 18? I think the first two well, you caught, I was 12. Yeah, you're 12. I just mean, like, I guess for a living. My own boat. You're chartering with us at 16. Yeah. I mean, I, I started fishing on other boats when I was, like, 14, 15, 16. And yeah. then um, I guess my dad bought the JC. And I worked to pay it off, which sucked for years because I didn't make anything. Yeah. Um, 
and then he finally was like, all right, you know, the, the JC is yours. And that was uh, probably eight years ago now. Yeah. And then uh, we had a few good seasons. And Steve Ghetto said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sell the Duffy. And I'm like, that's the, the boat I've always wanted. You know, then I can go harpooning. And uh, I bought that. And I was scared as fuck buying that because I wasn't sure if I would make enough money to pay it off and, and whatnot. But, you know, we paid it off in, in two years. That's amazing. Thank God. To pay a boat off in two years, that's fucking unbelievable. I forget what the question was. Like, what advice? <laughs> like, I guess, I don't know. Oh, I guess. Kind oh, of- don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess like it's... What's like one tip, I guess, you could give to someone that's wanting to get better just with time. giant It's blueprint. just time. Yeah. The more so time you... just commit more time. There's, there's nothing special to hooking tunas except time, I think. And I think the RFDs hurt. Yeah. Oh, big time. Hurt the full-time guys more. Yeah. Um, you know, like I remember we used to take weekends off because it would be crowded or, or you know we never worried about taking days off now it's like you got to go no matter the weather yeah Yeah. and when you're not out there every day you don't see what's happening every day yeah and then you don't hook as many fish yeah so the rfds definitely suck for the full-time guys i think yeah or for the guy that that can say all right well i gotta fish sunday or i want to fish sunday monday mm-hmm. or the other days wednesday thursday yeah sunday, sunday you know, monday they can kind of plan their days off yeah and, right it is tricky it puts everybody at the same playing i kind of wish it was four just four days in a row without the gap monday tuesday wednesday thursday you yeah. get overnight less expenses you're on the fish more right. less gap in between but it is kind of nice like the days off are nice yeah i mean it is nice to you know, have feel actual, like you don't have to go. Yeah, yeah, have actual days where you're like, all right, now I can actually do boat maintenance. And- well, you were also like, you've also, you know, RFDs, not all the time, but you were definitely filling the gap a little bit here and there, like charters, jumping on, mating. Yeah, I would do charters. I'll go lobstering with friends, yeah. mackerel fishing, yeah. whatever. Commercial bass. I mean, last year was kind of nice. You know, the commercial bass was, was good. And on Tuesdays, yeah. I'd go commercial bass fishing. One thing about the RFDs, and this is like a little weird, not weird to say, but it's competitive. Like you're doing it for a job. You're like, we're all doing it for a job. Just in different ways. In different ways. We're all best friends, good friends. There's still that factor though of like, you want to keep your network small. And I would, I would say like pre, pre RFDs, our network was small. And then smaller, smaller. Like I didn't even talk to you that much, honestly. Oh. Which is like, I feel like you didn't have to though, because you knew what was going on. Now you were there every day. But now with the RFDs, which I like, because I, I don't know, I like having my friends in the network, which you can't always all the time because it's competitive. It's just the way the fishery is. Yeah, there's only RF- so many friends you can have sitting totally. in one spot. With the RFDs though, being out there on charters, like we're out there every fucking day, so. To be able to kind of, I don't know, share that info and be like, you guys weren't out for two days. This is kind of where it's been going on. It's I think it's definitely. You know, At the same time, it kind of sucks on somebody that's like, you know, I haven't fished in a week, but hey, where are the fish? Yeah, yeah it does. Like, suck. Mm, I don't want to tell you. There's the, right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but then you feel like a dick and you're like, eh, there's yeah. a there's a hard balance. And then like you want to give some info, but not all of it. Yeah. Like, where was it out east? It's like. That's what's like, tough. Come on, it's like you I don't, don't want to fucking tell you, but I'm, I kind of have to say something. Yeah, you don't want to be a dick and not say anything, but uh, you know, a wise man once told me never lie to somebody. Just say I don't want to tell you. Yeah, yeah. but you still look like a dick. One thing I learned from Jeff, which makes total sense. It's not like a, it's not like a withholding information thing, but like you said, if you don't want to tell someone, just straight up say I'm, I don't want to tell you, but. You know, I also don't like upsetting people at the same time. So my yeah. approach, which I've learned from you, is like people don't need to know the information until they're just about to go. Yeah. It can change That's up to the too. fucking the hour. I'll, I'll text you in the morning. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. Co- you know, somebody that you know can, can fish Sunday because it's a weekend. 
you know, and you're friends with them. You've been friends with them for years, and they they call you on a Monday and be like, "Oh, what happened today?" And you're like, "It, it doesn't really matter what happened today." Yeah, you know, um, it can all change in yeah. a tide change. I definitely did that quite a bit too. It's like if you're going that day, I'll let you know the morning of because. No matter how good of friends someone is, they end up talking to well, the thing. two to five people minimum. And they talk to two to five people. And they people. talk to two to five that's people. That's the thing. You say, oh, you know, don't don't tell anybody. Yeah. You know, you, you tell one person, don't tell anybody, but I want to tell you because, you know, yeah. you're my buddy. I was by myself here and I saw a lot of fish, marked a lot of fish, caught right. a lot of fish, whatever. And then they, you know, they tell one person, hey, don't tell anybody, but, you know, Taylor told me this yeah. about this spot, you know, but he wants to keep it quiet. Then that person tells one person, and next thing you know, there's 85 boats there. And it happens fucking so, so fast. Like uh, Southeast Corner. Yeah. Like, um, you know, you and I were chatting, like, earlier in the week, and then we didn't talk for a couple of days. It was, like, it was, like, Tuesday or I can't remember what day. But it was fucking ferocious the day before the next commercial yeah, day. That was in October. In October. I, I, I and was I, up on Jeffries. Yeah, and I, he was on Jeffries, and like I didn't even talk to him. And then like that morning of, I was like, it was fucking insane here. Like if you you know see us, like you should probably start where we yeah. were. But it was it didn't mean fuck all because the fish had moved fucking ten it miles south. It was like ten south. miles south. Yeah, that body mass was there. They're just ten miles away. Exactly. They're still together. You know. That, so and we all that's caught besides like, us too. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of like you know when we're harpooning, people ask, oh, you know, what did you see? Like, where were you? And it's it, especially harpooning information. It does not matter because what we saw see harpooning most of the time, you, you can't hook those fish, anyways, and most of the time, you know, if we get fish. You know, we be running bunch after bunch after bunch one day, and it's rare now. But say we get a, another weather day and we go out the next day, a lot of the times the fish aren't even there. Yeah, I think the more valuable thing to um, to take away from a report or whatever is like not necessarily the location, but what bait. did what did you see? Like, how did the bait look? What birds did That's you way see? More valuable what whales location. did you see? Because then, like. You know, you can glass, looking at your radar, you know, whatever else. You can start to put those pieces of the puzzle together in that other location. You might just see a little snippet of it, but you might be on the leading edge of it. Or you might right. be on the tail edge of it. But at the same time, you know? I remember last year, we were fishing up on, like, the the 185, 190 line up on the west edge. Yeah. And uh, the bait was incredible. Savage. Savage. And... I got one early. You guys hooked one that was just mean as can be. Yeah. And I remember you watched, I was dragging my fish, watching guys back around for eight hours. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was like back down it, the whole I mean, that was, yeah. that was, you know, incredible looking. And there was fish there and they were, you know, there's no boat, so they would bite. And then the next day we went back and there wasn't any bait. Nothing. It sucked. They all went we got go dogfish, dogfish, dogfish. I think dogfish. we actually. That day we went there, anchored for a second. I think we actually pulled our ball, went to Middle Bank, and caught one at Middle Bank. Yeah. I think that, yeah. I think I, you guys caught one at Middle Bank. I went to the Southwest Corner, and it sucked. And I think I went home. <laughs> what's your favorite, if you had to pick, I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but what's your favorite spot and method to rod and reel fish? The Southwest Corner. <laughs> anchored on the corner. Anchored on the corner with herring out. Yeah. I love fishing herring. I, I love fishing up on Jeffries. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of that was back when southern that southern Jeffries bite was a thing. And that herring spawn was yeah. just insane. You know, it was like the spot to be at. You know, it wasn't always, you know, I feel like now there's so many fish you could go anywhere and have a pretty good shot at catching one. Yeah, you know, definitely. You, know, it was, you had to go here to, you know, get on the bite. Or, you know, I remember going up to the, the kettle up off of Maine fishing up off there because that's where the bite was yeah you know going down to the bb buoy that's where the bite was you've definitely fished a lot more spots from maine to the cape than we have for sure and that's yeah. just you know commercially tuna fishing it's yes. part of the yes. game catch one. yeah yeah i mean without the charters i'm able to you know go yeah go places helps yeah. build your instincts you can kind of see something in one spot and then if you see it in a totally different spot you're able to kind of process it and adapt better and one thing i've noticed this is kind of side tangent but not really is because you were talking about the corner being your favorite spot is it seems like 
like we fish there a good amount, but not nearly as much as you. It seems like there's some days and periods that you mark the living shit out of the fish on the corner and they will not bite. Think, and then there's other periods that you don't mark anything and you're getting bit. I almost feel like the fish on the corner are like bay fish, resident fish that kind of swing through. A lot of the fish on Middle Bank, you know, I mean, we've seen it in years where we're getting 100 plus inch fish on, on the corner and Middle Bank Slightly is, smaller. you know, 80, 90 inch fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are the fish out east. They come from the east, they feed on the bank, then they go out east. Yeah. So you think those, because it, it just seems like over the years, Middle Bank and even to the north, like when you mark the shit out of them, it's usually you're just hooking them fucking left and right. And on the corner, it can be like totally 50-50 with that. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just because of yeah. the size and like, have they seen a million boats already? Yeah. You know? I mean, how many, how many people have a herring at 90 foot on, right. on the southwest corner? It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. What's the, um, what's your scariest experience on the water or one of your scariest or multiple scary experiences? One of the only times I've been definitely a little scared. I was down fishing off the fishing ledge by myself and I knew the Northwest wind was coming up and I was, I, I fished right till dark and the wind came up and it was pretty shitty coming home. And it was dark. I was by myself. I remember getting back in the harbor and I parked the boat and the boat, everything was on the ground. I just parked the boat and ran up to my truck and went home. (laughs) Jesus. Yeah, by yourself, rough and dealing with those fish. I I thought this December that that day we we went out on the first. I mean, it was was blowing, what, west 40? Yeah. It was pretty shitty. And uh, we took a weird wave on the way out and... I thought the boat was going to roll over, even though it probably wasn't even close. Yeah. But I got it, thrown around in the wheelhouse. I remember I, that I exact thought, way. I thought we were going over, like, just, like, this is it. This is how I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice yeah. knowing you. Shit happens quick. That's one, I mean, that's one thing that I hope people get out of this. I mean, we've by no means been doing this as long as a lot of the guys that have been in this fishery for multiple, multiple decades, but... Scary shit happens fast, and you need to react fast, and you need to be able to anticipate things. Oh, I had Connor Doherty with me, and we were up off the, uh, we were at the flag, up off the Isle of Shoals there, and we're watching this this front come come at us, and it was it was thunderstorms, and we, you know we had cell cell service. I'm looking at on the radar, and I'm like, eh, it might not hit us, you know. It turns out it was like 30 miles straight of thunderstorms. And it, it hit us, and it was, it went from flat calm to, I guess they recorded 74 knots at, at oh, Hampton. shit. And Charlie was there, too. He stayed on anchor, but he kept drag. He just dragged away to, you know, wherever. Hmm. I came off anchor and started idling into it, um... We ended up blowing a window out, and it was that was scary. I mean, I planned on staying in the night. We ended up, I said, fuck this, and I steamed into Gloucester. I put trash bags in the window, duct tape trash bags in the window, <laughs> and uh, we ended up going out, going right back out, and we ended up getting like an 800-pounder the next day. Mm. That shit happens quick. That was pretty scary. Yikes. Lightning's my... I don't like lightning. Yeah, lightning scares me. And like that, that storm, it was like somebody took like a, a Kodak camera and was just flashing it in your eyes. Oh, fuck that. Especially in the dark. Oh. oh it was light out. Oh, it was, it was dark, but it was light out. But yeah. I feel like that's worse. I'd rather be in the dark so I can't <laughs> yeah. see myself get fucking so shocked. Vaporized. That, that, that storm came in, and I, I came off anchor, so I didn't drag. Well, I started to drag, so I came off anchor, and I, I, I had three rods out still, and I just idled into it. And by the time it, like, passed by us, our shit was just, like, all three rods were just a tangled mess of yeah. fucking shit. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of storm, it's fucking blowing up. It right is now. blowing We're hard right power. now. Yes, yeah, it's windy out. It's blowing probably forty. How do you want to? Uh, 
wrap this up. Yeah. How long has it been? Uh, almost two hours of record time. Told you, bud. Goes by fast. You did a really good job. This was fucking awesome. Um, any other final questions for Webby? I would do the whole, like, you can follow him here and all that, but he rarely uses his social media. He's uh, an off, more off the grid. I have Instagram. He has the Insta face. At Hot Reels Charters, right? I think. Yeah, I'd have to look. But I yeah. think it's at Hot Reels Charters. He's got some cool shit on there. Big fish. Check it out. I'll post uh, for the post for this episode. I'll dig up a couple. I have the harpoon video of the one that you stuck and then restuck. I have the one I sent you that? of us. Yeah. Um, I'll send you some more. Send me a few more so I can post I don't those have up too there. many. It's just whatever Mel's took and yeah. taken. Took in. Took in. Token. But I have some cool shit to put up there. We've had so many people ask to have you on. I'm so glad that we finally got to sit down and do this. We'll just have to do it again. We gotta get Charlie in too. You guys can chat, you know, yeah. stories that just between you two. Yeah. Sure there's some funny shit. Charlie would be good. You would be really good. Charlie, if you're listening, we'll call you and get it situated. Yep. Um well cool. This is awesome. Congr I mean, like obviously still early in your career which is great um but it's fucking cool to see someone at 30 years old be able to do what you've done with your boats and your program and catch as many fish as you have it's fucking just shit luck <laughs> it's, <not laughs> shit luck. it's, it's passion. Shit luck. passion hard work and dedication what people also don't re i don't know if they realize we haven't talked about it, is you legitimately do and and to to be successful and to turn a fucking profit on it everything is being done by yourself like you're not hiring yeah. anybody aside from having a deckhand like i mean well, all I, of the pms fucking when my of, engine went a few years uh two years ago now the engine in the boat went and i'd never put an engine in a boat but i found a, a pretty good used engine at commons and i you know a lot of help from friends and advice but i was able to put the engine in myself and yeah. I couldn't fucking believe it when it started, <laughs> <laughs> but it started and it drove the boat forwards. <laughs> we didn't even talk about that story. We didn't even talk about like the fact that he. We'll have to bring that up. All the fiberglass. I mean, like you literally do have. No, I'm just saying the story when he fucking broke his engine in the bay. Oh yeah, oh, that, yeah. that too. Well, I'll tell. We'll, that we'll tell that another time. Yeah, we will. I gotta I'll wrap it up. Yeah, well, tell it. I'll, yeah, go ahead. Tell it. I want to hear this one. I, I've heard it like really quick the night. All right, it real happened. quick. So we were <laughs> fishing the west side of the bay. Yeah. At where we were fishing. It was good. And that day, I mean, we marked some and it sucked. So right at dark, I mean, the sun was at the horizon. Uh, my buddy Brett and a few other buddies were like, it's, it's, it's good over a wood end, get over here. And I'm like, fuck, I mean, it's, it's dark. It was blowing Southwest 30. I'm like, all right, I'll go. So I steam, I, I come off anchor. I left the anchor and I'm steaming over there doing third, not 30 knots, but 22 knots full throttle. And I'm about halfway there. And the engine just kind of made like a weird skip, like a hiccup. And I'm yeah. like, did you hear that? No, no. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> so I get over there and, I, I put out one bait and the engine's still running and I'm like, I probably shouldn't have shut the engine off. So I shut the engine off <laughs> and no sooner I, I shut the engine off, I come walking out and the, the one rod I put out, it's bent over and I'm like, oh fuck. So I, I go to start the engine again and I start chasing the fish down going forwards and it's real rough. And I had uh, Anthony Altieri with me yeah. and it, so I'm it's like, dark it, right now. it's pretty much dark. It's pretty much dark. dark. And I go to Anthony, I'm like, all right, get ready. The engine's about to die. And he's like, what do you mean the engine's about to die? And I'm like, it's, uh, can you not hear it? <laughs> like, listen to it. So it, it died. And it's funny because the night before I put a rod holder up on the bow. Yeah. So he's like, now what do we do? I'm like, well, uh, the fish is kind of like up off the bow. I'm like, put the, you know, just free spool, walk it up to the bow and just do what you can. I'll try to get the engine going. So I get the engine going enough to spin the boat around to get the rod in the back. I get the rod in the back and the engine dies. We end up catching the fish and got the engine going again. But I realized the engine would only run at like 1,800 RPMs and up. So 
we, we got the fish in the boat, I got the engine going at 1800 RPMs and I slammed it into gear, which is definitely not the best thing for the transmission. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we were 20 miles from home. I made it 13 miles and the engine just made terrible noises and died. And I uh, ended up calling Cito and they towed us in. And that was the end Did of that. Did you offload the fish with Cito attached to you? I think I offloaded it the next day. Um, I tied up to the fish pier and Bobby came down and we got rid so, of the fish. And the night it happened and he was telling me this story, it was like a lot more animated because he still had like the adrenaline and, oh, yeah. and the sadness as well. Yeah. And I think you told me it was sad when you put Anthony up in the bow, you go, do your best. Yeah. <laughs> he goes up there. He's like, what do I do? I'm like, just do your best. <laughs> and I, I had my head down in the engine trying to, you know, get it going. And it, I would, it was so rough out. I would, you know, want to keep an eye on him. He was 18, 17, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, I'd peek up and he was just holding on for, <laughs> for dear life up on the bow. And I'm like, you're doing great. <laughs> I got him, Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> Hang in there. And then we, when we finally got the fish in the boat, we're steam, you know, steaming in until the engine died. I'm like, his mom's calling and calling and calling. And I'm like, dude, answer. He goes, I don't want her to know what's happening. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's like almost midnight. You should probably tell it's a school night. <laughs> and it, it literally was a school night. It was the end of September, middle of September. Whatever. Holy shit. That's unbelievable. So good. Oh. Yeah, well, that was that was fun. That's great. Well, this was awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. People are going to love this one. I love this one. It was nice to sit down and talk fishing and focus on it. So with that said, I'll do the OG outro. Uh, remember, you can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last, you'll just have to keep listening. Stay tight, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Seabros Fishing Podcast. If you'd like more information about today's guest, our episode, and show sponsors, or if you want to order hats and apparel, please visit our website at seabrosfishing.com. You can also stay up to date in all the latest Seabros Fishing content and podcast episodes by following us on Instagram at Seabros Fishing. Finally, to book a trip with us through our family-run charter fishing company, please visit massbayguides.com or see our latest updates and fishing reports by following Mass Bay Guides on Instagram and Facebook.